Now, being a foreigner, an expat, an immigrant that's from Australia, I'm not from the Netherlands, but has lived here for quite a few years now, I still get asked the same questions all the time. I have some top questions that I get asked by Dutchies every time they find out I'm from Australia, like literally every time. And most of the people in my immediate circle, they get it. They know why I'm here. They know my story, why I came, why I stayed, why I came back. So this probably is when I'm meeting new people, but it still happens. So this is my list of questions I get asked by Dutchies when they find out I'm from Australia. Before we get into the list, I wanna give a big shout out to our sponsor for today's video, who is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform for creatives and they have a massive range of classes that go all the way from learning how to paint, design, watercolors, hundreds of different mediums, but then they also do like really good productivity, how to use different tools, and I've used them to definitely upskill in the way that I work. A class I've been loving lately is by Sean Dalton. It's a creative portrait photography class. And the reason I like this class is because he goes through these really basic principles about how to take a portrait in a way that's a little more meaningful. Now I have very, very basic knowledge of photography, but the knowledge that he gives in this class, I can apply to literally any photo that I take from now on. So I feel like even just birthday parties and events that I attend with friends, like knowing how to take these photos, but make them nice enough that you would want to look back on them or use them for something else, I think is a skill that I'll have forever now. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads, they're always launching new and premium classes. So you get to stay focused and try out different things all the time. The first 1000 people to click on the link in my description will get a free month's trial of Skillshare. The number one question I get asked, number one, always, without a doubt, without a fail, the number one question I always get asked is why? Why are you here? What made you come? Why? Why would you be in the Netherlands instead of Australia? Why would any sane, logical person make that decision? I've been asked that in the comments here. I've been asked that by friends and family and also reversed people in Australia. Why did you go to the Netherlands? At the end of the day, I love being here in the Netherlands. I feel completely at home here in the Netherlands. The Netherlands is my home now. I also love Australia. I can love two countries simultaneously. I know, crazy concept. The Netherlands is not perfect, no. So the first response that most people say is, why would you be here? We've got this wrong or that wrong or pointing out all of the things that are wrong with the Netherlands. Hate to break it to you, but Australia's not perfect either. We have lots of things wrong with the country, structurally and socially and Every country has this. Every country has plus points and every country has down points. People move abroad for a range of different reasons. I was living in New Zealand for a, a while before I even came to Europe. So for me, living in Australia feels like a really, really long time ago. Not too recently when we got stuck during a global lockdown, I felt trapped in my own country. I didn't have a life there anymore. I don't have a job there. I didn't have a place to live. I was very much, in a weird familiar surrounding with familiar people, but not feeling at home the whole time we were trying to work out what is the best way to get back to Europe? What is the best way to get back to the lives that we had built here? It's interesting for me that people who were born here would assume that no one else could feel like this could be their home in a sense, or that people born here only see things wrong with the country. And I'm very critical of Australia. I was born there, I've grown up in the culture. I can very clearly see the things that are fundamentally wrong with the way people live there sometimes. So I guess it's kind of that aspect of the Dutch people and assuming why would anyone want to be here when they could be in Australia. I don't know if the marketing campaign for Australia is like on point, but Dutch people have like this crazy image of Australia in their heads. Most people that I talk to expect there to be beaches everywhere. My partner, in fact, was had like palm trees and sunny beaches. And for anyone who lives in Australia, he arrived in Margaret River in winter and his total dream of Australia was completely shattered. So maybe as Dutchies, you can tell me something. Where did this like crazy perfect image of Australia even come from? The second most frequently asked question that I get as an Australian is, is everything in Australia trying to kill you? 
I feel like I want to preface this by saying that at my ninth birthday party, my dog was attacked and killed by a crocodile. So it does happen, but not everywhere. This is very extremely rare. Yes, spiders are poisonous. Yes, snakes are poisonous. Yes, frogs and toads can also be poisonous, but it's not like you're dealing with these things on a daily basis, or it's kind of like integrated into the way that you live. You know how to walk in the bush to avoid snakes. You know how to identify snakes from a distance to tell if they're poisonous or not. You also roughly know which spiders to avoid and you always check your shoes before you put them on. And I still do this today. I also just still check the roof of the toilet when I'm walking in just out of habit because my worst fear is to be trapped in a small space with a spider on the roof and not being able to get back out. Like any city, animals are few and far between. So if you're living in any of the capital cities or in a densely populated area, this is very, very unlikely to be a part of your everyday life. Where I grew up, it was far, far more rural, hence the dog incident. But again, Australia is a massive country and it's different all over and you come into contact with different kind of wildlife all over. So no, have never been bitten by a shark surfing and have maybe once been stung by a jellyfish, but you know, it's just a part of everyday life in Australia. The most frequently asked question is, do you speak Dutch or like, why do you speak Dutch? Anyone, everyone speaks English here anyway, or why do you speak Dutch so well? How long have you been here? So like a combination of like language questions. I feel like Dutchies do better, like encourage people to be speaking the language. Telling someone there's no point learning Dutch because everyone speaks English is incredibly discouraging. And it's also a part of the problem because a lot of expats and immigrants and foreigners take that on and they're like, you're right. Maybe I don't need to learn the language. And I can tell you, and I've said this many times and in other videos before, learning the Dutch language has changed my life. I feel like I've been able to understand the culture. I've been able to understand jokes. I feel like I'm a part of the family that I've come into. I've been able to really integrate and understand the people around me and why Dutchies think a certain way. That's very reflective of the language. And I think learning the language of the place that you're living should just be second nature. It should just be a part of the way that you integrate. And no, you don't have to speak it perfectly, but to tell someone, <laughs> not to bother trying because everyone speaks English is incredibly counterintuitive. So I think we should all stop doing that as Dutch people. You only ever have to be at a party for a certain amount of time before everyone switches back to Dutch anyway. All the jokes, subtleties, tone, sarcasm. That's a big one in the Netherlands. All of these things are communicated usually through the Dutch language. And if you don't understand it, it is very, very easy to feel like an outsider, to feel like, you are not playing an active role in the life that you're trying to create here. So my word of advice for all expats who may be watching this video is learn the language. Don't listen to the Dutch people. Don't think because everyone speaks English, you can get away with it. It will change your life and it will make your experience living here so much better, I promise. The next question I get asked a lot is, do you miss your family? This is self -spreken. Um This is like obvious, is it not? Of course I miss my family. But I will also point out that Australia is big, we know this, and I had family all over Australia. So seeing family only on holidays or once a year is kind of normal. I know when my parents separated, I ended up living a four hour flight away from my dad. When I was about 20, I moved to the west coast of Australia. So like, all of these places are like days and days driving away from each other. It is very normal to have a very technology based relationship with friends and family, especially in Australia when everyone lives so far apart. So I think, yes, I miss my family, but I'm also very, very used to maintaining relationships through FaceTime or Zoom or Messenger or WhatsApp, like all of these things that enable me to still have really good friendships and relationships with my family back at home. If anyone, if any of you guys have obviously lived elsewhere, it's just a part of choosing to live somewhere else. Yes, I miss my friends and family, but I don't think that 
being close to friends and family would be worth giving up where I feel happiest. The last question I get asked is, when are you leaving? And I kid you not, yes, I do get asked this. And I will point out that this occurred more often when I was in Amsterdam. And I understand that mentality of expats frequently coming in and leaving the city and that real impermanence of who's staying around and who should I invest time in. Dutch people are busy. We all know that they love to plan their agendas out weeks and weeks in advance. So to try and squeeze a new person into your agenda and invest an incredible amount of energy to build up a friendship for someone just to leave in six months, 10 months, 12 months, I get it, I've been there. It's really difficult and it's nice to know that if someone, that you're beginning friendship, that they're gonna be a permanent part of your life. But yes, being asked when will you leave always feels like you should go now. Or like, you've had your time here, Casey, you should go. The Netherlands isn't for you. On top of this, I get a variety of questions about sharks, or surfing, slang words, a huge amount of Dutchies being like, oh, my auntie lives in Australia now and like never know where they live. Or do you know blah, 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 because she also lives in Australia. No, I, I don't know that person. Like, you know. But if you have any questions for an Aussie expat, let me know in the comments below. I will try my best to answer anything that is not already answered and give you my very, very honest opinion. So let me know and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.